Electricity has many useful applications that have come about because it is possible to transfer electric charge from one object to another. Usually electrons are transferred, and the body that gains electrons acquires an excess of negative charge. Such separation of charge occurs often when two unlike materials are rubbed together. For example, when an ebonite rod is rubbed against fur, some of the electrons from atoms of the fur are transferred to the rod. The ebonite becomes negatively charged, and the fur becomes positively charged. There are many familiar examples of charge separation, as when you walk across a nylon rug or rub a balloon on your hair. In each case, objects become electrified as surfaces rub against one another. When an ebonite rod is rubbed with fur, the rubbing process serves only to separate electrons and protons already present in the materials. No electrons or protons are created or destroyed. Whenever an electron is transferred to the rod, a proton is left behind on the fur. Since the charges on the electron and the proton have identical magnitudes but opposite sign, the algebraic sum of the two charges is zero, and the transfer does not change the net charge of the fur rod system. If each material contains an equal number of protons and electrons to begin with, the net charge on the system is zero initially and remains zero at all times during the rubbing process. Electric charges play a role in many situations other than rubbing two surfaces together. They are involved, for instance, in chemical reactions, electric circuits, and radioactive decay. A great number of experiments have verified that in any situation, the law of conservation of electric charge is obeyed and is stated as follows. During any process, the net electric charge of an isolated system remains constant, meaning it is conserved. It is easy to demonstrate that two electrically charged objects exert a force on one another. When two small balls that have been positively charged and are light and free to move, they repel each other. On the other hand, when one ball carries a positive charge and the other a negative charge, they attract one another. Finally, when they both carry negative charge, they again repel each other. These observations of the nature of the forces acting between charges can be summed up as follows. Opposite charges attract, and like charges repel. Like other forces that we have encountered, the electric force, also sometimes called the electrostatic force, can alter the motion of an object. It can do so by contributing to the net external force that acts on the object. Newton's second law, the sum of the forces equals ma, specifies the acceleration that arises because of the net external force. Any external electric force that acts on an object must be included when determining the net external force to be used in the second law. In summary, up to this point we have learned the following about charges. First, charges come in two types, positive and negative. Next, charge is quantized. Mathematically, we can write this as Q equals N times E, where Q is the magnitude of the charge, N is an integer, and E equals 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs is the fundamental element of charge as found on the electron or proton. Next, charge is conserved. The law of conservation of charge is stated as follows. During any process, the net electric charge of an isolated system remains constant. Finally, regarding the nature of the forces between charges, opposite charges attract and like charges repel.